It's called a Filipino Walk Part Two. Walking in the airport, walking to the jeepney, walking across the street. I was trying to learn how to walk like my brothers and sisters in Manila, trying to walk the sun while my souls burned without letting it show, trying to walk on water, on the moon, and on the sides of mountains at the same time without losing balance. I'm back home from Manila and I watch the way people walk. I see myself in their steps, climbing over each other, trying to get from point A to B, walking forcefully through shadows, memory, walls, mirages, apparitions, epiphanies. I walk through them all as if it were a metal detector. I am a defector in training wheels with no bike, just my feet. Manila walks nearby in my mind, walking forwards and backwards at the same time, bow-legged, the sun burning into my souls and looking good while doing it. Respect. And they were saying, you know, man, they're going to know that you ain't from there because of the way you walk. And there's no rules on the traffic end. Everybody's free for all, and you got traffic cops, they're, they're making all, you know, like doing it. It's all for show. Nobody's, you know, nobody's paying attention to the traffic cop. But it's a good deal for the traffic cop because he gets paid anyway. One thing about Filipino, uh, how many are Filipino in here in some way? Okay, so we got a few, okay. Filipinos are, and it took me going there to realize that we are great mimics, okay? And this is called my people. My people are great mimics. Just the other night, I saw them swallow up the night, becoming the night, wearing the night in their skin. A Pinoy wailing into a microphone, taking the shape of a Philadelphia singer, chords plucked from the Philly streets until the club became Philadelphia, and then Pinoy Delphia. <laughs> and every color bird became that other place where feathers were preened and glasses sat stoically in their ice. My people tap dance on water and become water at every, become water moving even while still at, at every pace, becoming the pace, the hop, skip and jump. My people can pop wheelies on a unicycle while popping popcorn and the pimples on their faces. My people are great mimics taking the shape of an hourglass and turning it into 24 hours. My people are great mimics with their share of gimmicks, becoming ideas that do not sit still, cutting loose like fire. My people are great mimics. They mimic the tires on the road, the nightsticks, the cars whose lips point towards you and away from you. They mimic the clouds, the lava, and the lizard. They mimic mirrors that deflect any memory of mimicry. They take the shape of the wind as it collects in their palms. My people are great mimics. They mimic the flute with cavernous throats that pop off popcorn melodies, coughing up peanut shells and candy wrappers. My people are great mimics, but they do not mimic pain. Pain mimics them. Another Filipino walking poem, okay? A friend said, they're gonna know you ain't from there by the way you walk. I hadn't felt the Philippine ground on my feet. I thought about how it was going to feel. 
would it be different than the ground in San Francisco or Daly City or Topeka, Kansas? How would my souls size up among the souls I was destined to see or not see? Walking in Manila, I was self-conscious. I watch the way people walk. I wear chinelas, but my cadence lacks patience and grace. An idea, I'll pretend I'm bow-legged. I curl my toes, pressing them into my sandals, but I end up twisting my ankle. A kid on the street looks at me with sad eyes. My friend, learning of my dilemma, says, you're walking like you have a lumpia rammed up your ass. <laughs> Thanks, I say, but I'd rather eat the lumpia. I continue walking, trying to find my rhythm. Um, let's see here. Um, let's see here. I'll just read two more. How many of you were here for the summer of uh, the summer of, of 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 love? Yeah, for the summer of love. Okay, so we got one hand. Okay, which means if you got one hand. It means you have at least ten. Nine others that aren't putting their hand up. Okay, so anyway, this is kind of a play on, on that. It's called The Simmer of Love. It was the simmer of love, making music on grease-stained pots and pans smeared in onions and garlic and chilies and tomatoes and beans and tofu and okra and all the stuff you never forgot sitting on our tongues and leaping in the aroma of our imaginations. In the simmer of love, we found the right temperature Room temperature, skin temperature, love temperature, knowing how to adjust to the fevers and chills and dips and highs and lows of the landscape as our bodies became one. In the simmer of love, those of us yet born fermented in the waters and oils and tonics of our mother's bellies, carrying the stuff that those who came before us stuffed in sacks before taking a chance in a place whose language was, wasn't theirs, whose welcome mats were turned upside down and inside out. In the simmer of love, our mothers and fathers sweated and went to night school and cleaned toilets and prayed to God for a government job and whipped our asses and wept, regardless of whether we deserved it. In the simmer of love, we found each other like two moths fluttering in the dark. In the simmer of love, there was a little bit extra, a little excess, and we'd send a plate down the hall to Elaine or Lola or Iris, who always said, thank you, baby. In the simmer of love, we'd throw it all in the pot and let it sit, not knowing how it come out. Sometimes it came out good, sometimes it came out bad. But we didn't think of the outcome as we were coming, coming, coming to that idea, that place, that area of consciousness with our eyes both open and closed, and the rent was cheap, and in the simmer of love, our initials were carved in Golden Gate Bark, and the dogs still howl in the morning, and the simmer is a boil, and the broth is thin, and our houses are dark, and our pots are cold, as Carlos said. The simmer is now a boil, a blister, a festering sore in a cold wind. The entrails of a kite dragging, pockets picked, locks change, long live the simmer of love. And, um, okay, so, this, so there'll be one, one, one more. Um, okay, I'll give it a go. It's called Lost and Found, and this will be the last one, okay? Okay, uh, lost, lost and Found. Um, if... And this might be a little preachy. If, if you are, you can feel free to stick your fingers in your ears and you don't want to listen. It's called lost and found. Losing grace is like losing your teeth. You can't smile. Your food doesn't quite taste right. It's like stepping in dog shit while eating an ice cream cone on a Sunday afternoon. Losing your grace is like losing your house keys or your balance on the reunion dance floor. If politics makes you lose your grace, give up politics. If jealousy makes you lose your grace, let that jealousy go, go, go. If the ball game makes you lose your grace, kiss the ball game goodbye. 
If religion makes you lose your grace, give up religion. If your maleness makes you lose your grace, give up maleness. If feminism makes you lose your grace, show it the door. If country music or opera makes you lose your grace, change the station. If magazines make you lose your grace, give up magazines. If hip hop makes you lose your grace, give up hip hop. If ketchup makes you lose your grace, switch to mustard. If baldness makes you lose your grace, grow some hair. If your eyes make you lose your grace, keep them open and don't stop looking. Thank you. <laughs>